Hello everybody, um, coming to you again to make another video. Um, um, today um, I want to, it's a little bit of a topic that I talked about on um, the radio show one time when I was on it, but um, I wanted to go a little bit deeper into detail. I might have to cut it up into two videos depending on um, how long this first one goes. Um, first I wanted to say something about, um, I watched the video that um, I forget who put it up, Red Pill Revolution, I think, about um, Saturn and uh, the Matrix and the Cube and um, Enter the Stars. No, it wasn't Enter the Stars. Round Saturn Jai. He was talking about how um, he was drawing a diagram about the box and how we're inside the box. And they were talking about how um, Saturn is like the god of this world, like Satan. He's the god of this world. And he's kind of controlling time and things like that inside. And you know what? What it immediately made me think of a simple kind of way to explain it is because um, it's kind of hard for people to understand some of that stuff. You know, it's like Peter said about Paul. You know, when Paul, um, all the stuff that Paul writes about in the epistles, like Peter even said, it's hard to understand some of the things that Paul's saying. Right? It's revelations from God, but to some people, even Christians, even spirit-filled people, it's hard to. To, to really grasp, you know, those those type of things. But immediately after I watched that video last night, what, what popped into my mind was uh, Paul says that he went up to the third heaven, okay? So if you read in um, Corinthians, I think it's 115, he talks about there's a celestial body, there's a terrestrial body, right? And then there's our body, there's a body of the animals, there's a body of stars and all that kind of stuff, Okay. The way I look at it, what the, what he's describing is how we're inside of the matrix and the cube, and the the Saturn is is time that's controlling everything. Um, if if we're in the matrix, if we're in here, then we're being controlled by it. But it God is bigger than it, right? So um, we're in what we live in right now is the first heaven. It's our sky and everything like that. The clouds. It's the heavens. Okay. Um, what I think of as space is a little bit different of what most people think of as space. Um, we've been taught by, you know, our schools and NASA and all these people that uh, the stars are one thing and, and the planets are one thing. And, and I do physically believe, you know, they're made up of gases and they're made up of all that kind of stuff. But to me, it represents something else, more spiritual and, and deeper. Yes, I believe that, like, um, that Saturn is Satan. And even um, Brother Bill, he talked about how he had a um, had a, a vision, or it just really happened to him, to where he was taken up to a moon on Saturn, and um, and he saw Lucifer there and Satan, and he stuck his uh, um, long nail in his head and all this, and said, "Now you're mine." And he um, he um, yeah, he, he saw Satan, and he called it the Cathedral of Pain, I think is what it was, because at the time he was a Satanist. So um, I, I do believe that that's kind of a representation of Satan. But um, if you look in the Holy Bible, stars a lot of times are associated with, with angels, and, um, and planets are associated with Lucifer and Satan. Um, so to me, what it is is we're, this is our... This is our um, we're in what they saw that they call the matrix right and that's the box that's the cube that we're in that's our um first heaven this planet that we're involved in the second heaven is where saturn is where satan is that's his kind of imprisonment that he's trapped in that's the second heaven and and a lot of times you'll see hear stories of people that um they'll talk about how they have to pass through the second heaven just to get up to um, where God is in the third heaven so God is in the third heaven beyond all um, anything physical and anything to deal with time he's outside of time that's the third heaven that's where we'll all go once everything is done once the new earth and new Jerusalem um, and, and new heaven is created that's where we'll all kind of be it's the th it's the third heaven it's outside of everything um, the second heaven Satan is still trapped inside of time, but yet he's still a spiritual being and a physical being at the same time. And then we here, we're spiritual, but yet we're trapped in a fleshly body. 
So that I just thought that was a little easier to kind of comprehend. It's like first heaven, second heaven, and third heaven. And it's truly biblical, too. I mean, you look at it, and um, a, a lot of Hebrew people, that's what they believe, too, that there's three different types of heavens. Okay, so I just want to say that first. Um, now, what um, I want to get into is something kind of on those lines. I was doing, before I even watched that video, I was doing a study about, well, actually in 424. 14 I did this first part and then yesterday I did another part so it basically this first part is about different dimensions and how I kind of see the the different dimensions where the fallen angels and stuff are and then the next um, either video or if I can fit it into this in time then it will be about um, gateways portals um, into the different dimensions like the whirlwind and stuff like that that's that's in the Bible um, okay so first I want to get started by kind of the, what made me think about this is um god says in isaiah you know don't contact mediums don't don't um deal with uh sorcerers don't necromancers wizards things like that um he, he told us not to do not to do things like that don't um call entities into this world into this plane into this dimension Right, because that's basically what you're doing. You're bringing them from another spiritual plane or dimension or whatever, however you want to call it. Right, um, I, I think of it as, as another dimension. Um, so he he tells us not to do that. And if you if we go back, what people have always always kind of done it. And I believe the reason he told us not to do it is because it is possible for us to do it. It's possible for us to 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 bring certain things over. And if you look at Aleister Crawley, Crawley when he um, he did his first um, um, rituals where he basically, and I believe what he did was he contacted Lamb and he did ceremonies and all this stuff to contact Lamb. I believe what he did was he opened up a portal to another dimension. This, this thing came through named Lamb and it looks like a gray alien. That's what it looks like. And that's what, to me, those are the watchers. I believe that that's what he had contact with. He contacted a watcher that deceived him and lied to him and said it with Descended Master and all that kind of New Age stuff. So he contacts this thing. He opens up the portal to it. He talks with it. He gets information about it. But then Crawley actually closes it back. He does a ceremony where he closes it back. Now, um, uh, in 19, I think it's 47, I, I didn't bring up the... The stuff that I researched about it, I guess I could look real fast, but um, crawl, um, I forget their name, but one was like a uh, a rocket, um, a rocket scientist, and all this other stuff. And basically, they did the same type of of um, ritual, but what they were trying to do is they were trying to bring in um, the 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 Scarlet Woman. Um, the Queen of Babylon, that's what they were trying to bring that into our reality. And they contacted the same type of entities. They opened up these same dimensions and brought the, uh, brought, you know, something back over. But they didn't close it. They left it open. And I, they purposely left it open like that. So when they did that, if you look, um, Crawley contacts this thing named Lamb that looks almost like a gray alien, right? It's a watcher. Um, these other people, they, they do the same type of ceremonies, but they leave the portal open and around, I think it's from like 45 to like 47 is the time period when they did it. That's the same time period that you have um, the uh, Roswell happen. That's the same time period that you have um, the Dead Sea Scrolls found. That's the same uh, time period that Israel becomes a state. You have all these different things going on, right, that are um, spiritual and physical at the same time. But that is actually when the big boom starts happening with UFO, you know, um, abductions and sightings and all that stuff. You think it's just coincidental that, that that happened? And so what I believe is, um, I just won't look up what those guys are. Um, if you have questions about that, about who those were, then just send me a message and I'll look it up and and let you know and send it to the website where I was researching it. Um, if um, oh, sorry, I didn't hit the button to change the um, to change the the verses to come up. From the ones that I did in my last video. 
Just give me a second. <laughs> okay. Um, Second Peter two, uh, Second Peter two four says, "For if God spared not the angels that sinned and cast them down to hell, which really it, 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 it's Tartarus in Greek, and it, Tartarus is actually you know in, in Greek mythology that's the 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 realm of the dead." Um, uh, down to Tartar, it says hell, but it's Tartarus, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Okay, and then Jude 6, 1, 6 says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but uh, left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto um, the judgment of, of the great day. And Enoch and, and Jubilees and those other books talk about it too. But my point is this. I believe that these things, these, these chains of eternal darkness, um, are another dimension. They're a dark dimension where God captured and, 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 and put these entities in. Put these fallen angels, put these you know watchers in. He put them in that, and that's one reason why God said, "Don't contact the dead. Don't contact any other entity on the other side through necromancy or anything else, um, because it's possible for us to open these portals, dimensions up for these things that God never wanted here in the first place." Right? It says that they left their first estate. They left their first estate. Well, they weren't supposed to. They were supposed to watch over us and protect us, but they weren't supposed to actually come down and somehow become physical and have sex and all these other things into our dimension. But you see, God never wanted that to happen. So, so they at first came down into it. So it was possible for them to move back and forth through dimensions, through portals, right? And I believe that with the flood, when the flood happened, like the ley lines and everything that used to be, um, that that. Like Atlantis and all the people always talk about that. That's kind of what they used to use as ley lines that were all over the earth. But you notice now people can't tap into them as much as like supposedly they did in ancient times. I believe that God with the flood, God did something. And and when the flood happened, it messed all that up. And that's why um, more, they're more spiritual and they need to work through humans and do other stuff compared to more how powerful they and big they were back then. Okay, so you see how... At, at one time, they could come through those portals and dimensions. God does something. Now he tells everybody, don't contact them that way. Don't, don't open these portals. Don't, don't have any contact with them that way because it's possible for to open them up. Now, Crawley and these other people, they open up these dimensions and look what happens. Um, and that's what I believe that the Bible is speaking about right here. And these are dark Dimensions. These are these are places where human beings aren't supposed to go. I mean, because we all understand that hell was never intended for one man to go there. Not one man was ever intended to go to hell. Hell is reserved for the devil and his demons and the fallen angels. That's what hell was made for and reserved for. It's a dimension of, of prison and torment for them, not for us. Satan wants us to go there so he can hurt God. And, and I heard somebody say one time, and, and, and I agree with this, every soul that, that Satan can take to hell that won't believe is a little piece of God. It's a little breath of God that, that God put into all of us. It's a little piece of God that he can take. You know, and I mean, God can take it back if he, if he wants to because he's God, right? But you see how Satan, just anything to get to God, he, he tries to do. And... And if you look at the reason I say that all these other dimensions are, are darkness is because Jesus is the light and he is in this world and in the, the heavens. That's that's where the light is. And if we look at um, 1 John 1 through 5, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. Okay, so the light is in this world and in the heaven. Because we read in Revelations that there will be no need for a sun or a moon because God and Jesus are the light there. So the light is in this world, and those other dimensions... It's, it's, it's nothing but darkness reserved for them. Okay. Um, hell, Tartarus, Sheol, Abraham's bosom, and other dimensions like the lake of fire. Okay. 
Um, and I got with that, if you look, I mean, Matthew 8, 10 through 12, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto, uh, uh, said to them that follow, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I have not found um, such great faith, no, not in Israel. And I and I say unto you that many shall many shall many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the um, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. Um, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Right. So you see that that that's um, outer darkness. Um, it's another dimension of just darkness. Um, Revelations twelve fourteen says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So you see, death is um, another dimension. Hell is another dimension, Tartarus. Um, and it's cast into like another dimension, a lake of fire. And then when, when it speaks about outer darkness, doesn't that kind of sound like to y'all like the, the, like I was kind of speaking about space and how space is, is, um, is just dark way out there we don't even know how far it really goes you know and it, it's like they're thrown out into that into outer darkness into nothingness right so um because if there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and a new jerusalem the old has to pass away and, and it's kind of looks to me like that's where it would be thrown it, where the old goes and in the still dying and, and decaying world that we live in now when it goes away that will be i believe like hell and, and all that stuff will be part of it the outer darkness Matthew sixteen eighteen says, And I say unto you, unto thee, that, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, if you've never seen Tom Horn's presentation on this, it's really good when he, he points out that the gates of hell are the portals of hell. The gates of hell are opened up, and it's the portal of hell. And he's saying here to Peter that you're the rock, and my church like us believers they, that those portals won't and, and those things coming through those portals from the other dimensions will not prevail against us that's hallelujah moment right there you know i mean that's like praise the lord you know <laughs> um let's see okay and this is just thought i mean it's not thus says the lord but um i also um thought maybe sleep could be like a gateway into another dimension you know that when we sleep spiritually we go in like to another dimension and if we look at psalms 3 5 it says i i laid me down to sleep um i awaken um for the lord sustain me um ephesians five fifteen says uh, therefore he saith awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and christ shall give thee light um i don't know i mean it just if you look at job um 33 15 in a, in a dream, in a vision of night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumbering unto the bed. And then it goes on and it speaks, you know, how God speaks to people in, in dreams and different things like that. Um, I mean, I just thought of it kind of like, well, is it possible that we go, because when people have near-death experiences and they're outside of their body, it's, 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 you know, sometimes it's like a dream type kind of state. So I don't know. That was just a thought, really. You know that about the um, dreaming in, in another dimension or something, which it, it could be possible. I mean, I don't know. But um, okay. Well, I guess let's see how long this video is right now. Well, I'll stop because this video is 18 minutes now. So I'll stop here with this one, and then um, uh, the next video will be about um, gateways and and portals. And the whirlwind and different things like that. Okay, thank you guys. Wake and watch for Yeshua. God is love and I love God. Amen.